before I go to page seven, I'm going to do this question using the graph instead of menu three, two. So let's go to the graph screen on our calculators. Let's hit control doc and let's add a graph. And let's type in these equations here that you see at the top of your screen. 3x plus 5. Enter. And hit tab again. And enter in these, this equation here. Okay. Now we have an intersection point. And to find that intersection on the calculator, menu 6, 4. We need to go to the left of this intersection point. That's what lower bound means. So go to the left and click the middle of the touchpad. Click. Where the little hand is, you see? Click in the middle of this big rectangle here. Looking shape. <laughs> okay, now roll your finger over it and roll to the right. Click again. And there it is, negative 2, negative 1. And remember, I taught you how to grab it and move it if you need to. Put the hand on top of it. Click and hold. Let the hand close. Once the hand is closed, then you can release and move it. Click to release it. And there it is. You can see definitely what the answer is. Let's do number 24. Oh, I've already done it. Hey, 7. Okay, in this graph, I have, I'm going to do these out of order. Let's talk about this graph right here. How many times does it cross? One time. Then this is what you call it. And what am I asking for in this problem? So, can this be the answer? No. How many solutions do you see in this problem? That's right. Am I asking for this? No, I'm asking for that. So A cannot be it. Now we have two graphs left. How many times does this graph meet with the other line? looks like infinitely because they're on top of each other. Remember, that's infinite solutions. That's not no solution. So can this be the answer? No. Then why is this the answer? How many times does it touch? It doesn't. That's what this means. Number, I'm not going to say the next one. Which statement below is true? This is the number I'm talking about right here. Okay, so let's look at the table. Can you find this value? Let's see if this is correct. There are two ways to do it. It's either something times him will equal this and that number will be the same. Or you multiply both numbers and get the same answer. So which one gives us the same number every time we do it? Over here, I'm not going to get the same answer. This one is going to give me what times 2 is 20 is going to be 10. What times this is 40 is going to be 40. You can already see that I have two different numbers, so it's not that way. It's this way. And when you multiply x and y to get the same number, that's called what? Yeah, good job. So which answer choice explains these type of problems? We have two. We know that direct looks like this. We know that inverse looks like this. 
which answer choice talks about this. Let's look. The y-intercept is for m only. So we can't use that one. Yes, we did multiply a and y. You're right. But is this correct? Ah, good job. Let's try another one. The relationship between x and y described. Okay, wait. What are we talking about again? This one? Or are we talking about this one? We're talking about him. Of these two, who's linear? He is. So therefore, we have an answer. Next problem. Now we need to talk about the linear parent function. I want to show you something. That's who you need to remember. That's who the linear parent function is. So let me graph it for you. Control dot add a graph. And now this represents y, so you only have to put the next part that I just showed you here in the calculator. Press enter. That's what the graph looks like, but we need the table. So control T. Let's match up the tables. Look at the X and Y values. What do you notice? Yeah, they are the same. So look at D. It says 2 in here, but it here it says 2 and 20. Is that right? No. Here, is that right? No. What about here? Well, right there it is, right there, yes. Ah, uh, no, no. And then that one doesn't match, no. We're left with one answer choice. Can we check? Well, we can press up to look at the negatives. And then we can go down to look at the other positives. We have an answer. I'm going to go ahead and do the last page on this video. Are lines that cross are all of them perpendicular. I'm going to circle the answer for you so you can see it. And now I'm going to prove it to you. Oh, the rulers are out in the classroom, so let me use my grader. Okay. I have two set of lines here. I have these. And I have these. Let's use the protractor. Will this give you, let me move it over, will this give you a 90 degree angle, yes or no? No, it doesn't. Are these intersecting? Yes, they are. So yes, they intersect. Are they 90? Let's try these over here. Are these 90? Yes, they are. So yes, they intersect. And yes, they are 90. So one worked, and one didn't. So why is the answer I chose correct? Because of this word. That's not true. So you must choose him. Next question. We are giving a slope and a point 
and it says use point slope and I know you guys don't know how to use him but in parentheses what did it say any method and what are we doing writing an equation of a line so plot this point let's do that one is positive so that means you go up four is positive so that means you go right and let me check my work one box two box three boxes four boxes put it at the end now you have two points so four this is eight and if this is three then he is good job Remember, it's always x comma y, so that's this. Now you have enough information to use menu 613. Control doc, add a calculator. Menu 613. Control right parentheses. Do not put 4, 3. You put 4 and the other x. And three and the other x or the y I'm sorry but three because it's a y and then the other y if you want the fraction form menu two two there is your m there is your b okay number 30 we're still going to use menu 613 I just gave you four points in table form. So let's do it. Do not put the five next to the negative two. You're putting X values. Press enter. There is N and there is B. And that concludes the test.